morning, everybody. Turn your hymn books to page 393, please. One of my favorite songs is just like His Great Love. A friend I have called Jesus Whose love is strong and true And never fails however tis tried No matter what I do I've sinned against this love of His But when I knelt to pray Confessing all my guilt to Him The sin clouds roll away And it's just like Jesus You roll the clouds away It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day it's just like Jesus all along the way it's just like his great love sometimes the clouds of trouble be dim the sky above I cannot see my Savior's face. I doubt his wondrous love. But he from heaven's mercy seat, beholding my despair, in pity burst the clouds between. And shows me he's there And just like Jesus He rolled the clouds away It's just like Jesus To keep me day by day It's just like Jesus All along the way It's just like his great love Sorrow's clouds overtake me and break upon my head. When life seems worse than useless and earthly hopes are dead, I take my grief to Jesus then, nor do I go. In vain, for heavenly hope he gives that cheers like sunshine after rain, and it's just like Jesus, all the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus. All along the way, it's just like His great love. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine. Of all His care and tenderness for this poor life of rolls the clouds away and it's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away like Jesus to keep me day by day it's just like Jesus all along the way it's just like
right. Turn with me now to page 390. 390. You know, Kevin talked to us this, this morning and talked was in his teaching. He was talking about Job and all the things Job went through and had to go through in his life. And, hey, are we any better than Job? I looked around this morning and I thought as I was in Sunday school class how many, how many ladies that typically or normally are here and uh, they're not here because of illness or sickness. And uh, we all go through things. Um, you know, there's an old scripture that says God's no respect of person. And uh, that goes both ways. And, you know, and, and good and bad. Sometimes, he, sometimes uh, sickness comes, health problems come. And it's just going to happen. It's part of life. We just got to keep on holding on and trusting on, trusting the Lord, and He's going to bring us through, one way or the other. Correct? Praise God. All right. I would not be denied. When pangs of fear seized on my soul, unto the Lord I cried till Jesus came. And made me whole, I would not be denied. I would not be denied. I would not be denied. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. As Jacob in the days of old, I wrestled with the Lord, and instantly with courage old, I stood up to His word. I would not be denied. I would not be denied. said my Lord was gone and would not hear my prayer. But praise the Lord, the work is done and Christ the Lord is here. stand. <clears throat> Joanne, find God is so good. I like to sing that chorus this morning. He is good, isn't he? Amen. Amen. I like for everybody, I know, I know in the day we're living in, it's hard to get everybody to shake hands, and that's all right. I understand. But you know what I'd like for us to do? I'd like for you to turn around, and, and, and if you're on the back row, this doesn't work. <laughs> Don't turn around if you're on the back row. You just, you just look forward. Everybody just look around and give somebody a big old smile and say, God loves you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. God is so good, Joanne. Did you find it? God bless you. God is so good. God is so good. God. I love him so. How about that one? And I love him so. I love him so. And I love him so. He's so good to me. And how about he answers prayer? And he answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. Now, I 
I wonder, and I don't know why I wonder, but I wonder, has anybody got a prayer that the Lord has answered this week that you'd like to share with us? Anybody at all? Good. My wife's feeling way better this week. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Jim, I'd like to pray the Lord this morning. You know, there were several weeks and several weeks. <coughs> uh, Jason and Emily had lost his son to suicide over there in Madison, Indiana. Um, you know, he's back to work. He's, he's, he's got his struggles. Sure. Praise God. Amen. Let's let's remember that. What you know, I can't imagine. Well, we've had we had a family just recently went through a similar thing, not suicide, but uh, death and lost one of their children. I and as parents, it, I, I I can't imagine it. I can't imagine. It. And no, and we we never expect to see our children go before we before us. Brother Kevin, come right on. All right, I'll tell you what, folks, let's. Good. want to praise the Lord this morning. Can't praise him enough. Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth. I know he does, Sharon. I, I know he does. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's right. Amen. All right, anybody else before we go to prayer? Have a praise for the Lord. Amen, Donna. Praise the Lord. Uh, yeah. Amen. Let's remember Oakley. Any other prayer requests this morning? Yes. Remember John and Cindy. Sheila. Christy, Kathy, 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 Look at your bulletins. It's full of people that needs prayer. Be good to take one of those home with you and look it over and pray for people. Anyone else? Amen. Amen. Anyone else? All right, by the uplifted hand then, unspoken request, and please feel free to pray where you want to, and the altars especially.
time, if I can have my ushers come up, we'll take the morning tithes and offerings. And uh, just wanted to mention a couple things. I'm sure maybe Ben's got a couple other things to add. Uh, but next Sunday, October 1st, at Napa Auto Parts, from 2.30 to 3.30, we will be standing again out in front of the store for the unborn. Uh, so if you would like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you. Uh, Catholic Church is a big part of it. First Baptist Church is a big part of it. They're, they're probably our two best supporters, but boy, would I like, I, I'm just this competitive kind of person that I'd like to see Christian Union people be a part of. It. Stand out and, and you know, it's, we don't scream at people or holler. We just hold some signs and protect the unborn and, and just let the people of the community know that there are a few of us that stand for what's right. Amen? Amen. 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 That's next Sunday from 2.30 to 3.30 out in front, of, in front of Napa Auto Parts right up here on your left. The one that says, close Sunday, church open. If I had room, I'd put Christian Union Church open, but I don't have room. So. And uh, don't forget uh, the revivals. The last week of this, um, last week of October, and on that Sunday's homecoming revival, we don't want to forget that. So start inviting people to come in. Amen. All right. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, as you're given this morning, let's not forget about the driveway project. Uh, that's, Im that's important. Uh, we've got around 38% of our goal. Praise the Lord. That is good. We've got about 38%. We're looking... Uh, for somewhere around $80,000 to complete this project, you just pray about it. Pray what God wants you to do. Well, praise the Lord, John. We appreciate it so much. Trevor's a good... Christian boy, he'll help us if he can. I'm sure he will. All right, Darvin, you want to pray over the offering, please? somebody else with a testimony before we have Sharon come up and sing for us. All right, I just ask you for the rest of the service to mind the Lord.
I thought of Sister Carolyn Kingry back here this morning as, as she was testifying that she's got so much to be thankful for. I want to sing this song especially for her, for you, Carolyn. So much to thank him for. As I look around to see the good things he's done for me, I know I'm unworthy of them all. For his blessings he freely gives, I owe my life to him. I've got so much to thank him for and I've got so much to thank him for so much to praise him for well you see he's been so good to me and when I think of what he's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much, so much to thank Him for. And sometimes, while on my way I stop, I kneel and say, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And someday, when I reach heaven's shore, oh please, let me kneel once more. I've got so much to thank Him for. And I've got so much to thank Him for, so much to praise Him for. Well, you see, He's been so good to me. And when I think of what He's done and where He's brought me from, I've got so much to thank Him for. And when I think of what He's done and where brought me from I've got so much, so much to thank him for I'm going to try to sing one more anytime I'm in a valley I'm sheltered on both sides go ahead and let it play One day, in my darkest hour, I felt so alone. Seemed like all, all my friends had all gone. In my despair, Lord, I felt I couldn't reach you. But you said, be still. Just say in my will, this valley is for you. There's always a little stream of cool and living water. Lord, I can feel a newness. I know you're my father, cause there is a fountain deep and wide anytime I'm in a valley I'm sheltered on both sides don't let me walk in the valley all by myself Oh, Lord, come and talk to me while I have to be here. And if there 
there's a need to stay a little longer. Lord, do as you must. In you I trust to make me grow stronger. And there's always a little stream of cool and living water. Lord, I can feel a newness. I know you're my father. Cause there is a fountain. And why? And any time I'm in a valley, I'm sheltered on both sides. And there's always a little stream of cool and living waters. Lord, I can feel a newness. I know you're my father Cause there is a fountain Deep and wide And anytime I'm in a valley I'm sheltered on both sides Anytime I'm in a valley I'm sheltered on both sides. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those songs, Sharon. Always do, oh, you always do such a wonderful job. We've got a lot of talented folks in our church, don't we? We've got a lot of talent. Praise the Lord for that. I'm so thankful for that. Um, would you turn in, the, in your Bibles to, once again, if you're with us Sunday night, to Zechariah chapter 3. And that this is going to be kind of, I guess you would call it maybe a continuation of Sunday night. Um, God is so good, and um, sometimes He just gives you what you need when you need it, don't He? Well, He always does that, don't He? So if you would, turn to Zechariah chapter 3. And I'm just going to read the first seven verses, and then Lord willing, we'll continue that later. But if you would, yes, stand for the reading of God's Word. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, says this, And he shewed me Joshua the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Jesus... Or now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they said, set a fair mitre upon his head, and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you this morning for your spirit. Thank you for your word, Lord. Once again, as we revisit this scripture, Lord, bring newness out of it, Lord, I ask and pray. 
I just pray, Lord, you'd have your way this morning, Lord Jesus. Speak through your word, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as we revisit this again, as uh, we did uh, Sunday night, last Sunday night, and, and um, God gives us wonderful services, don't you agree, don't you believe, and Last Sunday morning, um, God, we, we say things like God showed up, and we know what we mean by that, don't we? God is everywhere. He's not, it's not that somehow He's not here uh, sometimes and He's not other times. But folks, uh, Lord, uh, when, 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 when the ch- people of God humble themselves and allow God to speak through them, it just allows the, the, present, the presence and the Spirit of God uh, just to be ever more present. Amen? That uh, we don't want to quench the Spirit of God, do we? And we can do that sometimes. We can quench His Spirit by, you know, if God might lay a testimony on your heart and, and we just uh, maybe let, let Satan uh, talk, trick us out of it, we can quench the Spirit of God. Maybe if God uh, ha, ha, wants you to go pray at the altar. And I want to tell you something. The altar is not just for sinners to pray. God's people can come and pray at the altar. And you never know what kind of spiritual chain reaction that can cause. Amen? There might be someone just out there and under conviction and, and, and wanting to pray and, and go to the altar. Uh, but that first... Uh, someone maybe just could come out and step out and, and could make it just a little easier. Not that we want to make it easy. That's not what I mean. But we never know what God will do with obedience. Amen? But as we get into here, and, and, and Zechariah, we look at who was a prophet uh, uh, um, who was born in, in Babylon during Israel's 70 years of exile, and we looked at a little bit of that this morning in Sunday school, and, and uh, he joined the group of approximately 50,000 Jews. If you look in the book of Ezra, in chapter 2, verse 64 through 67, it talks about this, uh, the return to Jerusalem after the exile around 538 B.C. In the wake of a new decree for Israel's release was, which was issued by the Persian ruler Cyrus the Great. And these folks were tasked uh, um, with the building of a new temple in Jerusalem. What a task that would be. And the people would have to wonder and, and they would have to be obedient to God. Is this going to be a new temple dedicated to the Lord? Or are they again going to do things their way? We have to ask ourselves, are we going to do things our way? Are we going to do things the Lord's way? Well, Joshua, during this time, because during captivity, there wasn't necessarily a high priest. And so Joshua, this ain't the same Joshua as that we know in the book of Joshua. This is now a different Joshua, same meaning, but Joshua, uh, the high priest. And who, unlike Zerubbabel, who was in charge of the civil leadership... He was in charge of the spiritual leadership, if you read in Haggai chapter 1. Joshua, as the high priest, uh, represented the entire group of the Jews who returned to Jerusalem. But then what we see here in Zechariah 3 is that uh, Zechariah sees this vision of Joshua, a vision of him in the presence of the Lord. And first of all, what an amazing thing that is. Because uh, for 70 years, the, the people were in captivity. And, and there wasn't a lot of uh, um, uh, stuff given. I mean, the, the people had to serve their time. Amen? They had to serve the 70 years. And it was promised uh, through Jeremiah that after the 70 years, uh, they would be rescued. Now there was people, as Kevin mentioned, there were false prophets in that time that said, oh, it's going to be okay. Uh, It won't actually be 70 years. But when God says something, that's the truth. Amen? 
That when God speaks, you've had better believe that it's going to happen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's good. Uh, and that can be bad for some. Amen. Uh, that can be good news and that can be bad news. Amen. Uh, that when the, the Lord said uh, he's coming again, uh, he's going to gather his people, his church in the clouds. Uh, we're going to meet him. You had better believe uh, it's going to happen. Amen. Uh, but that can be good news. That's good news for us Christians. Uh, oh, but that can be bad news for those who don't know the Lord. But what God says is true, is true. So in this vision, once again, as we rehash this vision, the first thing we see in this vision is we see Joshua was before the Lord. And what an amazing thing that is. Uh, to, to start out with that, that Joshua was in the presence of the Lord. What no better place to be, folks, this morning is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Oh, I feel the Lord leading something this morning. There is no better thing in this life, in this world, than being in the presence of the Lord. And it's not all about feeling. It's not all about emotions. We can't, we can't rely on those. We can't trust our heart sometimes but folks we got to remain in the presence of the Lord because there's no there's nothing better listen I was pretty happy last night when the Buckeyes pulled off that win uh, you can say amen to that I was pretty excited I wasn't excited that the Reds blew a 9-0 lead that's another story but I'm telling you, more than that, more than anything, and that's so minute and insignificant about there's no other place I would rather be than in the presence of the Lord. Folks, whatever you're going through, just remain in the presence of the Lord. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever life is throwing at you, whatever the news is telling us, whatever you're facing at work, I don't know what it is. Oh, but just remain in the presence of the Lord. Amen. But what we see is when Joshua was in the presence of the Lord, what we see is Satan is there. The adversary is there. And it says Satan was standing there to resist him. Listen, I want to rehash this again. Spiritual warfare is real. You might wonder, well, how could Satan be there resisting him? Listen, you know, we, this is crazy. We don't think about this a lot. But Satan has access. Satan is spiritual. He's a spiritual being. He's a fallen angel. And right now, believe it or not, you know Satan has access to God? That's what it says. Revelations chapter 12 tells us that Satan, he's the accuser of the brethren. That Satan is right there, and, and when you're going through something, he, he's right there ready uh, to, to point out all the bad in your life. Isn't it? Now, I, 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 now, hold on. This is why I said we're not giving Satan all the credit. But just hold on. I'm pointing out the reality right now. I want to point out the reality that we have to realize and be aware that Satan is ready to steal, kill, and destroy. 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion and he's, he's going about seeking who he may devour. That's the truth. That, that whatever, whatever good thing is happening, whatever God is doing in your life, and has God worked in your life. Amen. But the truth is that Satan is right there ready to destroy it. It's spiritual warfare. We don't really know what spiritual warfare looks like. Because we're not so spiritual beings we live in the physical but there is real spiritual warfare that how many times uh, that maybe uh, you know we looked at Job this morning in Sunday school and uh, and all the things that he faced now we know the spiritual can manifest in the physical 
And sometimes we see the effects of that, don't we? That the spiritual manifests in the physical. We see it in life. It's, it's all over. But when, when God is doing something, God sends an angel to protect you. Satan sends angels as well to battle. Sometimes, believe it or not, the truth is, sometimes Satan wins battles. Now that doesn't mean that God is not powerful. And see, Satan is still the adversary today. That's what that means. Satan literally means adversary. It means that he is the, the accuser. The accuser. Satan makes accusations, right? You, literally, Satan means the accuser. The accuser accuses, doesn't it? Just like uh, the runner runs. Well, Satan, that's his job. That's what he does. He's the accuser. But let me tell you something. You call on the name of Jesus. You stand in the presence of the Lord. And there isn't anything Satan can do to you. Amen. He might be able to do things. He might, there might be some things that, that it seems that he is able to win. But he cannot destroy your soul. Amen. He might be able to take things from you. He might be able to turn and twist the truth. He might be able to make you feel down. And he might be able to make you feel like sometimes you're all alone. But let me tell you what. He can't take your spirit from you, can he, Kevin? He can take everything from you. But let me tell you, that's why it's so important to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why it's so important to stay in connection with Jesus Christ. Because if we have everything taken away from us, we still have everything because we have the Lord. Amen. Oh, but Satan is still the accuser today. He still walks about and he still tries to devour. That's why fervent prayer is so important. That's why we just can't give up in prayer. Amen. That's why we got to keep praying because every time we keep praying, uh, we, we, we're fighting, fighting spiritually and, and we can't see it. But we know that the Lord is fighting for us. Amen. Which leads to the next thing, the next part of this vision. Oh, the good news, folks. Is, yes, Satan was right there re resisting him. Listen, let commercial break. I want to say that just for a second. Before I move on to that second point, Satan will use anything he can to drag you down. Don't think for a second. See, Joshua, and, and, and we don't know why, I don't know why Joshua would have came before. And we, this is a vision, isn't it? But Joshua was standing before the Lord in filthy garments. Now, Joshua would have known better than to do that. Because according to uh, uh, the laws of the Levitical, you know, the, the priesthood, uh, uh, that they, they were to um, come in clean clothes to make the sacrifices. They were to, 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 to put on the priestly robe as we looked at on the Day of Atonement. But he came before the Lord in, in filthy garments. And don't think for a second that Satan didn't try to use that. You're filthy, Joshua. You're filthy. The Lord don't want anything to do with you. You're filthy. Hey, folks, I'm filthy. What? Folks, we're all filthy before the Lord. In sin. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God didn't turn us away because we's dirty? Aren't you glad that God didn't say, oh, uh, this, he's dirty, no good, we're going to kick him out, I want to find someone that's clean. Hey, there wouldn't be anybody, because we're all dirty before the Lord. Oh, but the Lord says, uh, come unto me. He said, you know, I'll, I'll clean you up. You ain't got to clean yourself up, but I'll clean you up. And as we see right there, uh, that, that Satan will use the filth in our lives. Uh, he'll use the past in our, of our past to discourage us and, and try to take away from what God has done. Uh, oh, but you look at Satan in the name of Jesus uh, and say, oh, according to the blood of Jesus, 
I'm forgiven. Uh, Satan, uh, there ain't nothing you can do. Uh, and you just call out in the name of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Satan, there ain't a thing you can do. Because what we see right there, part of that vision, oh, that the Lord was his defense. Ain't that good news? The Lord was Joshua's defense. There ain't a better defense than that, is there? You know, there's a really good defense attorneys and, and those who plead your case that maybe when you're wrongfully accused, because that happens, doesn't it? People are wrongfully accused. And I think that's good when, you, when someone is wrongfully accused to have a good defense, defense attorney to help you and to get you through that and try to seek justice. Amen? But there's no better defense attorney than the Lord. <laughs> Because the Lord seeks justice. And there isn't anything that hides from the Lord. The Lord was Joshua's defense. See, God revealed His mercy, stating that He chose to save this people regardless of their sin, in spite of their sin. See, folks, uh, the Israelites were... were a, 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 a sinful bunch of people, when it, if you think about it. I mean, they couldn't get it right, couldn't get it together, and over and over they'd keep forgetting about the Lord and turn to idols, and they're lift up what we see, the high places where they worship false gods, and they get into the worship of Molech, which is uh, the, the, the false worship of uh, child sacrificing and all these horrible things. And God said, get away from that. And he pleads with them over and over. And he says, just come back to me. Humble yourself. Amen. Uh, humble yourself. Turn from your wicked ways. Will you do that? Turn back to me. Pray. If you will do that, I will, I will hear from heaven. I'll forgive your sins. And I'll heal your land. Oh, but over and over would they fail, would they mess up. Oh, but in spite of their mess ups, in spite of their sin, God came to save them anyways. Folks, uh, in spite of our sin, uh, Jesus came uh, to save us. Uh, Jesus said, uh, while we were yet still sinners, uh, Christ died for the ungodly. And I'm so glad about that. Do you think God didn't know how Jesus would be treated? Uh, do you think God didn't know what was going to happen? Uh, no, he knew what was going to happen. Uh, but in spite of, but because of his love and his mercy, God sent his son to die for us regardless. Uh, die for a lost world. Uh, and that's what the world needs today, man. Uh, the world needs Jesus Christ. Oh, that's the answer. The world needs Jesus. Oh, but the Lord was Joshua's defense. The Lord is our defense. Jesus is our defense. Jesus steps in and says, yeah, I know he's guilty. I know he's got them dirty clothes on. Oh, but, but that's okay. I'm going to die for him anyways. See, the angel of the Lord was standing there as well. It was spiritual warfare once again. And because of spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that, that uh, we have to put on the spiritual armor of God. And I'm not going to get into all that. But you know what I'm talking about. Because we can't fight, uh, we can't fight uh, spiritual warfare with, with, with physical weapons. Amen? Can't do it. We got to fight spiritual warfare in prayer. We fight spiritual warfare and knowing God's word. Because <laughs> how does Satan attack most of the time? He, he distorts and twists what God says. Man, isn't that the truth? What he's done? And I, I don't mean to talk bad about churches, but oh, there's so many confused churches about what, what's truth and, and what's real, what's right and what's wrong. Listen, there's no confusion about it if you know what the word of God says. Oh, but Satan twists it and manipulates it. That's what he did with Adam and Eve, the very first sin that happened. Uh, he said, did God really say that you couldn't touch it? 
Did God really say this? He manipulates what God says. But folks, that's why it's important to know what the Word of God says. Faith, the shield of faith, that's why it's important to hold on to faith, amen? That no matter what happens, uh, we keep our faith in the Lord. Oh, that's why salvation is so important first and foremost. Because salvation saves us. Amen? And God instills His righteousness in us. We call on Him. We humble ourselves. We ask Him to forgive us of our sins, to come into our hearts. Then He instills His righteousness in us. And thank the Lord. See, that, those are spiritual weapons. Those are what we need to fight spiritual warfare. Listen, many of us, if not all of us, have or are going through some spiritual warfare. And it's not because we're any less of a Christian. Remember that. I want you to know that if you're going through something, um, it don't mean you're any less of a Christian. And actually, it might mean the opposite. Because it might mean that, you know, as much as it stinks, God's allowing you to be attacked because He believes in you because he trusts you and he wants to persevere James 1 uh, verse uh, 2 2 or 3 (laughs) says count it all joy my brothers when you face diverse temptations because we got to persevere and we can persevere through faith that when things happen, and that's not the way the world looks at it, but we count it as joy because it will make us stronger in the Lord. Amen. And that's what's important. Because, folks, this life is just temporary. It, we're here just for a moment. We're, we're but a vapor. And, and, and compared to eternity, it's short. See, God did punish Judah, didn't he? Through the fire of great trials. He let them get captured. He let them get punished. See, sometimes, you know, God says, well, you got to learn the hard way. How many here has ever had to learn the hard way about something? Me on many occasions, amen. And they had to learn the hard way. They had to let, God had to let them be captured. But what Satan meant to harm, harm him, God meant for good. Amen? But God, was still, God still had a plan for their lives. And let me tell you something, folks. If you've messed up and you have a past or whatever, God still has a plan for your life. God still has a purpose for you. If you're still on this earth, God has a... And that ought to make you feel special. <laughs> That the God of the universe has a plan and a purpose for my life. And that's where we're going to find purpose, is in the Lord. Amen. Psalms 46, 1 through 2 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Listen, the Lord is our refuge and strength. Amen. That when we feel like that brand in a fire, you know what it's talking about, a brand plucked out of the fire. That's a brand. It's like, you know how you brand a cow? You heat it up in the fire, and that thing gets hot, don't it? Well, we're, we're hot. We feel, the, we feel the, the, the pressures of life, and, and when we go through it, and oh, but God plucks us out of that. Amen? God will pluck you out of that. It will help you. He'll be your defense. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. The last part of this vision and where it's going to kind of wrap up is is this. See, not only was was the Lord Joshua's strength here, the priest. Not only is is God our strength, not only uh, do we have a shelter in the time of storm, a rock that we can go to, But the Lord wants to give us new clothes to wear. See, the Lord gave Joshua a new raiment, as it said. It said, put a fair miter on his head. Give him a new hat. Take off the old dirty clothes. 
put some new clean clothes on them. See, folks, that's the thing. We can never clean ourselves up, can we? Oh, but the Lord can. If you got a problem, you got a habit, whatever it may be, I don't know what it is. We think, oh, I just need to do this. I need, listen, you just give it to the Lord. Whatever it is, you just hand it over to God and say, God, you know my weaknesses. You know where I stand. You know what I struggle with. I cannot do it. I can't clean myself up. Oh, but Lord, I'm giving it to you. And I'm telling you, God will clean you up. See, Lord, help us. We never be ones that would say, uh, would, would, would turn people away. and would, would Because, hey, sinners are going to sin, ain't they? Now, I'm not saying we ought not to be offended by it. I don't mean soft. You know what I mean. I said that earlier. Sin, sin is offensive, as I said Wednesday night. But that's what the world's going to do. And oh, I hope we never be ones to cast people away because they're different than us. Oh, but we point them to the Lord. We don't worry about, about their habits right away. We don't worry about their past, but we worry about what God can do in their future. Amen? Amen. And all we need to be uh, the refuge. We need to be a place where sinners can come and find the love of Jesus. Because listen, Jesus will clean them up. Amen? Jesus. It's not our job. It's not our job to give people a bath. <laughs> it ain't nobody else's job to give my kids a bath. Well, maybe it's my mom's every now and then. But it's the Lord, it's, that's Jesus' job. We just point them to the Savior. We point them to the one that can clean them up. Praise the Lord that we serve a God that will clean us up, that won't just leave us, that He's not just one we go to. But when we go to Him, yes, He's our refuge. Oh, but He gives us a new change of clothes. Listen, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things... The old have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Listen, there's newness in Jesus Christ. There's new life in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you that when we come to Jesus Christ, He writes our name in the Lamb's book of life. And at the end of time, when He looks in Revelation, it says the books were open. One of those books is the Lamb's book of life. Oh, when He sees our name written in that Lamb's book of life, that's what's going to matter, amen? Praise the Lord. He's the one that gives the newness. He's the one that gives new life. And I'm so glad that He gives us a new name, don't He? He gives us a new life. Many times in the Bible, uh, you see Abram, uh, many, many examples. Uh, you know, Jesus, God, who will give a new name. <laughs> Listen, He gives us a new name. Aren't you glad? I might, I might still be Ben, I might, you know, you might still be you, but I ain't who I used to be. I'm not a sinner anymore, but I'm redeemed. <laughs> you know, I say, I, I've, I've, I've pointed this out before, I don't know if here, but, you know, and sometimes this world is all about the R's and D's, <laughs> Republicans and Democrats. Well, you got an R, listen, there ain't going to, the only R's and D's in heaven is going to be redeemed and discipled. Amen? Praise the Lord that when, when we're, we are, give this new life in Christ, we're given a new name, a new identity. And folks, that's, what, that's, that's our true identity. It's how we were created. We were created to be in a relationship with God. So when we're back in that through Jesus Christ, we're living the life we were meant to live in communion with God. Redeemed, bought back. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. What a good song that is. God gave Joshua new clothes. What did these clothes look like that he was given? Well, they were clothings of righteousness. You know, the, 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 and most of you know this, but the amazing thing 
behind this Joshua. And, and though we see there's really kind of some similarities between the Joshua that led the Israelites into the promised land and this Joshua, the high priest, both Joshua mean in, in, in Hebrew is Yeshua. It's where Jesus comes from, the name Jesus. I mean, that, and that name means that the Lord saves. How amazing is that? That the Lord saves. He is seen here, and Joshua is seen here as a picture of the Messiah. So Jesus didn't have any dirty garments on, did he? No. But he took on the dirty garments of the world. Jesus took on the filth of the world. And what a deal that is. That we can exchange our filth for His righteousness. And this is of first and foremost importance. That we need His righteousness, don't we? Because our righteousness won't do. We can't save ourselves. Our, our dirty clothes, our attempt to take, it's like changing the changing the oil in the car, but leaving the old oil filter on. We can, we can try to clean ourselves and fix us, but we don't get a new oil filter change. We're just going to get clogged up real quick, real soon. <laughs> well, thank the Lord that He can clean us up. Thank the Lord that it's His righteousness, not ours. The next thing, part of the clothing that Joshua received was unstained clothes. Clean clothes. Listen, our past is stained, isn't it? I have a stained past. I have things in my past that I ain't proud of. And I'm sure many of us are in that same boat, if we'd be honest. We have things in our, in our past that we're not proud of. Oh, we're stained. Oh, but in Christ we're forgiven. The stains of sin are removed. Do we realize that? In Jesus Christ, the stains of sin are washed clean. See, we hold ourselves accountable sometimes for things that God doesn't hold us accountable for. We, Satan brings back our past. God says, what past? <laughs> Praise the Lord. That He wipes the slate clean. And that's what our Lord does. He, he removes the stains and gives us unstained clothes because Jesus took the stain of blood for us. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The next thing He gives us a fair... A fair miter. Well, what's that mean? It's a hat. It's a turban. You know, the headdresses they wear that they would have on there. He gives us a clean one of those. And think, well, why is that important? Why is it important to have a, a purified headdress, if you would? Listen, the turban was part of the, the priest's garments. And, and on the front... It had a gold plate inscribed with this. And you can look at this in Exodus chapter 28. See, why it's so important. Why, why it's so important that God... Listen, we are to be, not be transformed. Or not to be conformed, sorry, to the, to the patterns of this world. But be renewed by the transforming. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Excuse me. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And I think that's what echoes here. Because you know what the priest had on the front in a gold emblem? It said, holiness unto the Lord. Folks, we need to seek holiness. That's important to the Lord. See, that God was giving him, God gave him a new change of clothes. God gave him a new start. He, God cleaned them up, but he said, you know what? He ain't going to start there. I want to give you a new mind. I want to give you a new headdress. I, I want to restore you to holiness. That's good, folks. That God says, listen, I got a plan for my people in this life. I want to clean you up. I want to wash you up. 
but I want to restore you back to holiness. Folks, we're part of what we call a, 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 one of them holiness churches. We know you heard that. But my, my, my hope is that all churches would be a holiness church. Because folks, we need to ask Christians, and I believe there's many Christians in here this morning. Most of us in here are Christians. Holiness unto the Lord is so important. And see, it's not about, see, we get the wrong mindsets about what holiness is. Holiness is not necessarily how I dress. It's not necessarily what version of the Bible we read. It's not what style, what kinds of songs we sing. It's not about different lingo. Holiness is about what God does in our heart and in our mind. He transforms our thinking. He puts a new headdress, a new white headdress, and on that headdress as the priest wore, there it says holiness unto the Lord. He sets us apart. Remember, sanctification is, 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 is a twofold meaning, being set apart and being made holy. Folks, we're all priests now. We're all priests we all share in the Levitical priesthood. And you know why? Because Jesus was our perfect high priest. And if we're in Jesus, then we are all priests. We are all in the priesthood of the gospel. And therefore, we should all, as priests of the gospel, wear the emblem of holiness. Amen? Are you wearing... this? Lord, help me. Lord, you have your way this morning. Are we wearing that emblem this morning, holiness unto the Lord? Are we wearing that? Is that our mind frame, holiness unto the Lord? See, the word in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it talks about being transformed is where we get the word metamorphosis. The word metamorpho met, in, in the Greek means literally to be transformed after being with. So it's being transformed completely. It's a new substance. It's, it, it, it's, new, uh, it's, it's elements come together and make a completely different substance than what we had, than what we had. But being patterned after something. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Patterned after Jesus Christ. Amen? I ask you this morning. Have we been transformed? Are we being transformed by the renewing of your mind? The, the, the next greatest thing about this pure mitre or this fair mitre is that the promise, listen, that God will keep you. Do you believe that? Has God kept you? <laughs> wow! I think about all the foolish things that, that I've done and, 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 you know, just how foolish really we are as human beings sometimes. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? But God keeps us. And He doesn't let us go. And I mean, He's not going to hold us so tight against our will, but He has a firm grip on us and ain't going to let other, anything else get to us. He's got us. He keeps us. He keeps our head. Not only are we transformed as Christians, or we should be transformed, but we are kept. And what good news that is. We're kept and we're given strength from day to day, aren't we? Sometimes uh, we have just enough strength to get through on that day. Ain't that the truth? Sometimes we wonder, where's that strength for tomorrow going to come from? Oh, but the Lord's faithful, isn't He? God is faithful. And he gives us strength from day to day. But here we run into some stipulations for Christ's continual covering. Christ will continually cover us. But here's the stipulations. Here's what I want us to look at. Look at the first part of verse 7 here in Zechariah chapter 3. It said, if thou will walk in my ways and if thou will keep my charge. Isn't that similar to the first Joshua in Joshua 1, verse 7? It says this, Only be thou strong and very courageous, you know this, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper uh, whithersoever thou goest. 
And look here in, in Zechariah 3 at the last part of verse 7. Remember it said, If thou will walk in my ways and thou will keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house and shalt, keep, shalt also keep my courts. He would continue to serve as the high priest if he remained diligent to stay obedient to God's word. Folks, we got to be diligent in staying obedient to God's word. We have to be diligent as this church, as churches all around. The church has to be diligent in being obedient to the word of God. Even the things in there that we don't like. Even the things in there that make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. That kind of hit us in the face. And maybe we've come in, in a moment like that in some time in our life where we've read God's word or we come across scripture that kind of makes us feel a little bit uneasy because it convicts us. And that's what the word of God does. It convicts us, don't it? But are we going to... Are we going to establish our version of truth? Oh, well, God didn't really mean that. It's thousands of years old. Things have changed now. Oh, help us. Are we going to stay diligent to the Word of God? We have to stay diligent to the Word of God, to be obedient to God, whatever that may be. What if that means, oh, we lose a tax status? Are we persecuted or, or, or what, whatever we may face? Do we stay diligent and obedient to God, whatever the costs? Now, I think it's important to stay obedient to God. I don't know about you. Christ could come at any time, couldn't he? He could come. And, we've been saying this for a while. I believe it with all my heart. There are so many things. It's just insane. Uh, leading up, I, I think, how in the world could, could, uh, could they explain uh, millions of people disappearing all at once in the rapture? I think about that. And I think, I think there's some things that's kind of coming up where it's going gonna, it's gonna to contribute to that explanation. Imagine that. Millions of people, Christians... We all raptured at the same time. How's that going to be explained? But listen, I believe that it can happen at any time. And I believe that we need to be ready. Amen. So we must stay diligent and obedient to God's word. Verse 7 there, the, even the last part of verse 7, there's actually kind of three parts. The last part of verse 7, Zechariah 3, says, And I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. God promised Joshua privilege access into the presence of God. That's good news. See, we have the same promise. We have privilege access to the throne of God. We have access. Do we really? We have access to the creator of the universe if we stay in Christ. Hebrews 4.16 tells us let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But I want to ask you this morning, I want to leave us, and I want to finish and close with this little short story. But I want to ask us, do we need a new change of clothes this morning? Do we need a new change of clothes? I'm sure everybody in here... <clears throat> knows or has at least heard of John Wesley. We are called, we consider ourselves to be in our Wesleyan Arminian church. And we, uh, um, but John Wesley, when he was six years old, I think about that, six years old, his house caught on fire. I don't know, maybe you know this, maybe you've read this, I'm not going to get too deep to it. His house caught on fire. And he had a lot of brothers and sisters, I think it was ten, he had, I, I think, I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But he had a lot of brothers and sisters. Everybody got out. But John Wesley, little six-year-old John Wesley, was stuck, was stuck in the upstairs, couldn't get out. The fire, he was stuck, and he was right there, and he couldn't get out in the burning house. And the only rescue 
but he was rescued. And the only way he was rescued was when a neighbor climbed on another neighbor's shoulder and pulled him out of the window. Can you imagine that? A guy, they climbed on his shoulders and rescued little John Wesley. He was preserved. This is a, and a picture of this scene was drawn for Wesley. And, and he kept the drawing until he died. And he wrote under it this scripture. In Zechariah 3, 2, is this not a brand plucked from the burning? He was a brand, bland, uh, a brand plucked out of the fire. And like John Wesley, although trials and tribulations has occurred, God has kept you and has preserved you for a reason. He has. Maybe you're in that fire right now. God is with you in that fire. God is with you. And we may never, <laughs> the truth is, we may be in that fire all our lives. And we may never seem to be plucked from that fire on this earth. See, we're not promised an easy life, are we? No. Actually, Jesus says in this life you're going to have trials and tribulations. But we are promised that God will be with us in that fire. And someday we will be plucked from that fire. And we're going to give, be given not just new clothes, but we're going to be given a new body. And we're going to be forever with the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. Would you bow your heads this morning and close your eyes? That all we need to do is repent and ask God to forgive us. When Satan tries to make us feel dirty and unworthy, remember that the clean clothes of Christ's righteousness make us worthy. It makes us worthy to draw near to God. I want to pray this morning, and I don't know, I don't know where your heart is. I don't know what you're going through. But I want to ask you in, this, in these few moments, would you just focus on the Lord? And what he may be calling you to do. You do what the Lord tells you. You come to the altar if you feel like you need to. But will you just seek the Lord this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that I'm just a brand plucked out of the fire. Hell's fire. Oh, I deserved hell. But you rescued me anyways. I was dirty, but you came to me anyways. <laughs> and in my filth, you, you plucked me out of that deep miry clay and you gave me a new robe. You gave me new clothes. You gave me a new name and wrote that name down in your book of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, that you've given me a new mind. You've, you've, you're pattering, you've patterned my my thinking after your thinking, Lord, and you continue to do that every day. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, I owe you my life. Or maybe, I don't know, somebody in here this morning may be going through some fires right now. But we just come before the throne of God together this morning. And let us just come before you this morning. Because when we're before you, the outside world has no hold on us. Satan has no hold on us. When we remain in you, we want to stay in you this morning. I encourage, Lord Jesus, I encourage these folks this morning, Lord, that we just stay in you at all costs. No matter what, Lord Jesus. And I don't know if anybody in here, Lord, needs to pray this morning. But Lord, I just give you everything. In your name I pray, amen. I don't know this morning where your heart is. I don't know what, I know what some have been going through, but I, I never know exactly. I don't know anybody's heart except for the Lord. Lord, Lord, the only one that knows your heart, isn't he? He's really the only one that knows really what you're going through. So I would just encourage you to give him whatever you're going through. Give it to him. Give it to him. 
Don't take it with you. Give it to him. Let him have it. He wants it. <laughs> Give it to him. Whatever it may be. Give it to him this morning. Would there be anybody this morning that would just say, I just need to give it to him? I don't know what it would be. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I don't see what the future, <laughs> I, don't see how the, I don't see how it's going to work out. But Lord, I just give it to you. I give it to you first. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you everything, Lord. Be thou my vision, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you so much this morning for being obedient. God is good. Stay close to the Lord today, amen. Stay close to the Lord. Would you come back tonight at 6 o'clock? We'd love to see a full, we'd love to see a full church house on a Sunday night, wouldn't you? Amen. Come tonight back at six o'clock, and we'll see what the Lord will do. Jeanette, would you pray for us? Dismiss us in prayer this morning.